It's Virtual NAM 2021 at Geekazine.com. Continuing coverage of NAM 2021 Virtual. Jeffrey Powers is here. I'm here with Peter over at Morph. How are you doing, Peter? I'm doing quite well. Awesome. And uh, you got you got some pretty cool uh, pads here that we're going to talk about in a second. First of all, tell people uh, what your role is with the company and uh, and a little bit about the product. Uh, yeah, so I'm Peter Nybor. Uh, I call myself a product strategist because it's kind of a vague term. Uh, I do a lot of different things with Sensol. So I'll do things that are technical. I'll do things that are more like design. Um, I do business development and then I do sales and marketing. Uh, so yeah, my sort of, my core strength is music technology and music interaction. And so that's what I really try to, you know, focus on with the Sensol Morph. Okay. Yeah. That's a good, you know, music technology is a great place to be, I think. So, um, <laughs> so we have Morph here and which is pretty exciting and it's not just, not for the, just for the musician, but also for other people as well. Uh, why don't you tell people what Morph is and how it works? Yeah, let me switch over to my overhead camera here. And uh, we can take a look at what the Morph is. It's about uh, the size of an, you know, an older iPad 2. And what it is is a touch sensor. Uh, it's composed of about 20,000 small pressure sensing uh, touch sensor elements. Sense, that's our name of our company, Sensel. Uh, you can see it's a very thin device. And uh, what it does is it has, we have all these different overlays that are made out of silicone rubber. And you just plop it on there and the device instantly recognizes it by virtue of uh, magnet arrangements in the back. Each one has a, has a distinct arrangement of magnets. Yeah, I see a and once LED you put it light on, going through there. Yeah, and once you put it on, it, it recognizes what overlay you have on it and then you can start using it. So in this case, it's a piano keyboard and... <laughs> And nice. I can put on a uh, like a drum pad overlay, and uh, in this case, I will have to switch over. I don't have anything really fancy to switch it over automatically. And uh, so now I have like MPC style drums, and then we have. Um, the Buchla Thunder overlay, and this is a revival of a musical interface that Don Buchla uh, invented in the late 80s. So we worked with Buchla about two years ago to bring this to um, to the market and give sort of people an opportunity to experience a, a really innovative and unique uh, musical interface uh, without having to marry to some, you know, really big bulky device that only does that one thing. So, everything's pressure sensitive. Uh, we use MIDI polyphonic expression quite heavily. So, you have per finger control over, um, you know, pitch and timbre and dynamics. Um, we can also demonstrate that with. Uh, you know, different type of patch. So we have after touch and location all on each finger. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's sort of the crux of it is that it's a really highly portable. It works via USB. It works via Bluetooth. Uh, so it integrates nicely with iOS. Um, not only music applications, but we have things like the video editing overlay. This works with Adobe Premiere. So and once you once you put that on, does that open up the program, or does it just say, "Okay, I'm only going to work in Adobe Premiere"? Or how does that work? No, no. So you would have to. So once you uh, put this mat on, it recognizes the shape, but it doesn't communicate anything to the computer much. Okay. Um, so now I put this on and it's ready to just start sending all of the keyboard macro commands that you would use in Premiere. So I'd have okay, to open so up if, if I had like a cut, if I was doing cuts and pastes, all I would do is is all the hotkey controls. Yeah. Uh, if yeah, you press so, that button. Okay. So it's in some ways like a specialized keyboard for Adobe Premiere. Okay. Yeah. And then we also have the uh, the innovators overlay, which is clear. And in this one you can actually see the magnet arrangements. Uh, if you look closely at the top, at the mm -hmm. uh, top and bottom, yeah. And you can, in our software, design different layouts. So in this case, I have like an isomorphic keyboard arrangement, Ooh. and 
uh, once we put that on there, I have like this cool hex pads that I can use. Uh, yeah, and everything's just kind of instant. And what's really cool is that, you know, you kind of, once you acquire several of these different overlays, you have the interface you need for the type of music or type of sound you want to produce. Um, you know, making beats on a piano keyboard is technically possible, yeah. but musically not so desirable. And also, you know, you really wear out that low C on your kick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. That is true. Um, how many overlays can you have? Can you we have, well, we currently have uh, a library of eight different overlays. We also have the keyboard overlay, which is just, you know, a QWERTY keyboard. Mm. Um, and then we have the gaming overlay, which has gaming controls. Um, that one's, the gaming controller, honestly, is not super ideal. You kind of have to fiddle around to make it work with yeah. your games. But I'm, um, I'm, talking, but I'm talking more of the printed yeah. overlays. How many, can you, how many can you make in store? Oh, uh, you can just do one. Um, and so if you want to, you know, change the layout, you have to go to our software and flash a new map for the innovators overlay. How hard is that to do? Mm, it's pretty simple. Um, it's just, you open up the application, you select the overlay, and then you just send the map to morph and then it's ready. And then you can okay. close up the app. Uh, so do you like draw out the region to create the tone, what, whatever you want the trigger to do or? Um, yeah, I can, if I, if you want, I could share my screen here. Yeah, we don't, we're not set up for screen yeah. share, unfortunately. Oh, so. okay. Um, um, yeah, but you can take a look at on our, you know, on our YouTube channel, we have lots of different videos, but for the most part, yeah, you just, we have different shapes that you can select ovals, rectangles, hex, hexagons. And uh, you just place them visually. If you wanted to, you could take like a piece of paper and draw them, you know, out with a Sharpie or whatever, and then just take mm -hmm. a picture of that and then import that as a background and then use our software to align them to your drawing. Okay. Uh, so it's really quite quick. And then you assign them either keystroke commands if you wanted to do something like, you know, your own video editor or audio editor, or you can assign them MIDI commands or CCs or whatever to control music software. Or, or anything. You could control lights. You could control uh, music, of course. You could control anything that, that accepts MIDI at that point, right? Uh, yeah. And actually, if you really want to get nerdy, we have an API. <laughs> so you can, okay. use, you can use the bare surface. Uh, mm -hmm. it, and the API integrates with C, C Sharp, and Python. Uh, and then we also have it integrated into Pure Data and Max, Second 74 okay. Max. So you can get individual contact information. So... You put down five fingers and you'll get a dictionary of, um, you know, where each finger is, how much pressure each one is applying to the device, the size of the pad, the angle of incidence and ellipticality of it. So you get a ton of information about every contact. So you can make some really interesting instruments um, or gesture controllers or whatever, anything you want to do with touch and pressure you can extract all of that information from the bare surface. Um, and because so can, it's pressure sensitive and not capacitive, yeah. you can use kind of any material you want. So if you want to make a leather overlay, you can make it out of leather or, you know, silk. Yeah, do a D&D do a &D type thing where, you, where you, that's your dungeon master board or something like that. Or right. put plants on top of it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So. Nice. Yes. Symphony for Cactus. So this is just basically one big giant trackpad in, in, in some way, shape, or form, right? I suppose that's one way of looking at it, yeah. Yeah, so you could make a mouse out of that if you yeah, wanted there to. Yeah, <laughs> there is a trackpad mode for it. So you can actually you know, define a region of it as a trackpad or use the whole thing as a trackpad. But you know, to be, to be fair, it's not the most awesome trackpad. Oh, okay. Um, the you know, the technology is actually really good for that, and we just announced um, at CES this year that our technology is being used in a new Lenovo laptop for their trackpad. So, oh really? If you seek some okay. of that out. Yeah, if you seek that out, you'll find there's been some really spectacular reviews about the the new Lenovo. Uh, I believe it's the Titanium series. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to interview them at CES this year, but uh, I definitely want to take a look at their at their uh, new notebook line because they got a lot of very interesting innovations there. And now yeah. that I know that that's in there, that's uh, that's another new innovation that I want to take a look. At. So, 
Yeah. All right. Uh, so we get the get the idea here. Uh, is you? My understanding is this has been out for a couple of years already. Uh, yeah, about three years. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and switch back to the other camera if you want to. Oh, sure. Um, the uh, the device was actually launched with a Kickstarter, I think, in 2015, and then it took a couple years to actually really nail the device down and get it produced and get it manufactured. Uh, and I came on board about 2017 and uh, or 20, yeah, tw yeah, mid 2017, and we started um, opened up our shop and started selling to the general public. And since then, we've just been doing um, just really kind of like slowly growing it. We were originally direct to consumer, and now we've started introducing it to retailers and distributors worldwide. Okay. So it's available, you know, everywhere. <laughs> uh, available for Mac and PC, correct? Mac and PC. Uh, it also it works on Linux. Our Linux support is not. Um, top-notch like our, our Sensel app, which you okay. use to configure the device. It works on Linux, but there's some distributions where it's kind of funky and it's not, it's kind of a, an alpha release. But okay. yeah, so some, some Linux users, users have a great experience and other users have a little bit less great experience. Okay. Yeah. So uh, does Sensel make anything else other than this pad or...? Not for consumers, no. Most of the, the like Sensel is a technology company, and they've really been focusing on a lot of their business to business enterprises. Um, okay. So the Morph is our, is it currently our only uh, consumer device. You break into the consumer. Is, is it, is it a plan to, to you do more consumer products or? Um, I mean, there's only so much I can really say about our roadmap, but mm -hmm. consumer products are definitely part of the future, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, very interesting. I'm very excited about it. Uh, so it's out now. How yeah. much? Uh, so for for the U.S., we have different pricing in the U.S. and Europe. Um, but in the United States, we have the Morph Plus One overlay is $250. And uh, then we have the overlays available for $35 a piece on our website at morph.sensel.com. You'll find there's some different bundles. We have bundles with some software from Audio Damage. Okay. Um, so you can, you know, bundle it up with some really awesome plugins from, uh, audio damage that, yeah, those things just are marvelous. They really bring a lot of good character into, uh, into your compositions. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Looks, it looks great. Uh, so morph.sensel.com, that's S-E-N-S-E-L.com, correct? Correct. Okay, perfect. Uh, anything else you wanted to talk about with the, with the morph here? Uh, well, today we actually just released a set of MPE presets. So uh, MIDI polyphonic expression is is what is the standard uh, that allows us to do the uh, you know the per finger uh, gestures and get individual pitch bend and timbre for each note of your instrument, um, and that's been developed over the past couple of years, and it's really starting to take steam because. Uh, uh, Live 11 is actually introducing MPE support. So there's going to be a huge audience of people who are going to be very curious about it. Yeah. So our MPE preset pack has presets for several different uh, MPE synthesizers and including Bitwig Studio and Live 11. So that's a free download from our website and uh, you can check those out and start getting to know MPE a little bit. All right. Well, yeah. Morph by uh, from Sensel. Uh, Peter, thank you very much for your time. Very interesting. We'll try and cool. get one in the studio here so we can uh, review it. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much, uh, Peter. Yeah. And uh, you have a great, uh, great show. All right. Thanks for reaching out and uh, look forward to seeing the final results. Thanks a lot for watching this video by Geekazine. If you're over on geekazine.com or youtube.com forward slash geekazine, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell notification so you know when the next video comes out. Until next time, you guys geek out and take care.